Hey, this is John Malcolm from the Simple Radicals out of Chicago, Illinois, and you are listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Brutally Delicious! Hey, welcome to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I'm Bruce. My name is Chris. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Today, we're going to be speaking with Simple Radicals. Wow, isn't that an interesting name? Because it radical is, very, is far from simple. Wow. What do they call that? Like a conundrum? I don't know. I don't know. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a student here. I don't know either, but you can, you're like Mr. Google. You can probably Google it. You're a, you're a, uh, you're a philosopher, so why don't you ponder Dude, you have on no the idea how, like, I am so bombarded in, and I'm not complaining because that's what I signed up for, but it's way deep. And I think as you get older, it's harder to retain info. Oh, yeah. I'm like, str- I mean, I'm doing all right, but I'm struggling like crazy. Yeah. You're all trying, these, like, trying to figure out the world religions and what they mean and where they came from. and Oh, yeah. So we've already gone through like Zoroastrianism and Hinduism, and now we're in Buddhism. Oh, yeah. 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 You know what my favorite and religion is? Beerism. Like, yeah. Beerism. Beer- beerism. 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 I find it. What I find of, it. Uh, what kind of church do you go to for that, or temple? Uh, I go to the Church of the Pint. <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> All right, so Sorry while we're I'm doing, offending any religious people out there. Uh, whatever. I mean, I think everybody. What I'm learning from this course is that everybody's entitled to their own, their own sort of thing, right? Yeah, like the Pastafarians. Hey. The Pastafari, or yeah, is that the uh, spaghetti monster? That's the spaghetti monster. Yes, and that's a pretty interesting religion as well. Yeah, you want to hear a funny story? So I do. My dog has Cushing's like- disease, which means his adrenal glands put out too much uh, adrenaline. Mm-hmm. So sometimes he's really fucking hungry, and sometimes he's not hungry. But he didn't eat for about two days, so I was like, okay, I gotta give him something to make him want to eat. Because if we're out on the right. walk. If we're out on a walk and he finds a rotten piece of meat, he's all over it. So he's not, it's not that he's not hungry. It's just that right. he's, you know. So I decided to start transferring over to ground beef from fish. Mm-hmm. Is that what you feed him, fish every day? I have to, yeah. He can't eat kibble. It's really sad. <laughs> so Interesting. Every day I make, or not every day, but every three days I make him rice, vegetables, and fish. So, wow. But, Recently, I put him on uh, ground beef, and he went fucking nuts. And he eats it so fast that he throws up because he doesn't eat, and then he just like everything at as fast as he can. <laughs> yesterday, really? yeah, yeah. Yesterday, I put it in his bowl, and he just went crazy. He just like, eats it, and then he just pukes it back in his bowl. And I was like, oh. I was like, oh no! So I run over to pull the food, and by the time I got there, he had ate it all again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why dogs do that. That's disgusting. Oh, that's fucking disgusting. <laughs> and I was like, Jesus, <laughs> come on, Chris. Hey, there's a tennis ball. What? <laughs> John what the hell Mel- are you talking about? John Melkin has a tennis ball as his profile <laughs> picture. Yeah, I don't see it, but. I think it was by default. I think they, I didn't pick one, so they gave me a tennis ball. Well, you're going to understand why later in the show. Why I uh, think yeah, this well, is funny. Now you forced me to ask that question. <laughs> it's so rock and roll, man. <laughs> <laughs> so Sean, that's my partner, roll. Chris. Hey, how, are you how are you, buddy? Good, Good man. How are you? Great. Hey, thanks for joining us. Yeah. So, I guess the uh, the best way to do this, and if you... um. You could describe the simple radicals and give me your like your two sentence boardroom pitch. Yeah, uh, how do we, how do we uh, how do we categorize our band? Is that basically yeah? Your- I mean, I know yeah. it's it's rock and bluesy, but give me the two yeah. the two sentence boardroom pitch. All right, boardroom pitch. Jeez, I haven't done this in ages. So, <laughs> all right. So, from a simple radicals from a musical and stylistic standpoint, you, we'd have to classify ourselves as retro rock and roll, which you don't hear a lot today because a lot of bands coming out are, you know, tend to be a little more heavier metal or heavier rock and all that. Our influences are really in the, 
the, the, the classic rock sound, the Pink Floyd, Pearl Jam, Foo Fighters, Cheap Trick, what, what we grew up with and we listened to. So we kind of combined all those sounds and influences into this kind of this retro rock sound, which when you listen to the album, it's it's a little bit different than what you normally hear today mm -hmm. coming out from a music standpoint. It's, you know, it's kind of takes you back to like kind of the 70s, 80s sound. Right. Um, and from a lyrical standpoint, I'm just infatuated with the Eddie Vedders, the Dave Grohl's, the Zach from, um, from uh, uh, oh my God, I'm having a talk, from uh, Rage Against the Machine. Okay. Um, and just so we, we, we've kind of taken this retro sound and kind of this uh, this album project worked on this new revolution is kind of a I don't want to say socially conscious so that kind of just that sounds just awful but <laughs> it just just it was trying to capture which is a lot of the shit that was just going on going on around the world today and just a lot of what people are saying and thinking and feeling and all that and we we want to try and capture that in our lyrics and combine the two and hence there's that's the longest elevator pitch and hopefully it's a tall building but. Um, <laughs> We're on the 71st floor right now, and I know you guys get you wanted to get off into the 50th floor, but um, all good. So that's yeah, that's that's kind of this. That's kind of where we kind of stack ourselves together, and and it's 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 been interesting because we've been getting a lot of play. I mean, it, this a lot of people we've been talking, a lot of interview, interviews we're doing, and a lot of the, the stations that are picking us up. They're like, "This is interesting. This is very fresh and different. What is this?" I'm like, "Well, it's kind of classic rock." Like, yeah, but it's not, you're not classic because you guys have been around that long, but, but it's just classic round rock sound. So it's, uh, it's a little funkier. Nice. How's that pitch? That's beautiful. <laughs> when you guys are, when you guys are writing, and I know you say you're writing about current events and that stuff, are you worried about it being controversial at all? Or is that sort of the point to push the. Uh, well, so for example, the, uh, we didn't, I didn't, I wrote all the songs, so I didn't write it to be controversial. I wrote it kind of from the heart. A lot of the things that I've been thinking about, you know, and like, for example, the song new revolution, that is the title track to our album. It's really about, you know, about starting a new revolution. It's not about revolution. Like, you know, like putting on yellow vests, like they're doing in France and they're around and burning down, you know, um, shops, right. but it's really about, it's a revolution about just, it's a, a new revolution about how people are really reacting and they're being very vocal and it's just getting out there and getting heard and trying to change things. And the video that we launched, uh, that Factory Underground, um, the studio that, that we work with that put together this video, the interpretation that they came up with and we kind of talked about was if you look at the video, um, it's very progressive and it's a lot of, you know, um, people marching against the police. And there is some things that are burning, but not like throwing Molotov cocktails at it. So it's very socially conscious and people might look at it and go very socialist and very progressive. And right. so we put that out there and in like in two weeks, it had like almost 15,000 views. It just like shot up. Wow. And some, <laughs> some of the comments were like, okay, yeah, we know where you guys are going. You know, you could tell some people were kind of MAGA. And, so, you know, so there was some conversation <laughs> and then they were going like, oh, well, we know these comments are coming down. And then, like, a week ago, by, and they're like, well, God, they didn't take down our comments. So that's kind of cool. So, you know, so we're leaving them up there. And it's like, yeah, we want, we, it's like we didn't create it to be controversial, but we're not, like, discounting the fact that it's creating a dialogue. And right. people want to use that to talk about shit and, you know, and generate some thought and some conversation. We're all over it. So, yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Chris? So are you guys like really political or just, it's just like how the country is being affected right now? I think that's it. I mean, we're definitely, we're, we're very apolitical, you know, I mean, we're, I'm, I'm a, I'm a diehard independent and John, my fellow radical, I think he's fairly independent, maybe skews a little bit more to the left and all that, so at least socially and all that, you know, I'm kind of like, say like I'm socially uh, conservative or socially liberal, socially moderate, and fiscally conservative, but but we're not, you know, this isn't a political statement, this album and all that. But I think because of all what's going on today in, in society and in the world is that when you, when, you know, we talk, I've talked about this in a few other, you know, interviews and all that, that I've given over the last couple of weeks. 
is that nowadays it's like when you launch an album or launch a song, people actually want to listen to the lyrics, you know, which is crazy, right? It's like before, right. it's like the old, it's like the strokes, you know, they come out and like he's like, what is this guy singing? Yeah, I hear voices, but <laughs> it's drowned out. But now you're like, all right, what is this guy really saying, you know? And and so, you know, we want to make sure that the lyrics are punching through. And the lyrics are, you know, when you start singing or talking about issues that are going on today or stuff that's coming from your heart, you know, about forming a new revolution and medicate about the overindulgence of medication in our society, you know, which is, you know, reflective of the opioid crisis and all that. You know, each of these songs has kind of like a, a some meaning behind it. Um people start going like, Oh, I know what you're, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I get it. You know, I, I say, I'm with you. It's like, Oh, that's great. You know, cause that's what I was thinking about. But, um, so I think there's just, there's so much going on. And like the song, the optimist, which is a song that I wrote about is like, even though there's all this stuff that's going on in the world today, just trying to still remain optimistic. It's like, you know, I, I'd like to still like live like a King and I still want to change things and all that. And I have my whole life to do it. I have, you know, I don't, I, I can, I got my whole life to try and make this be optimistic about it. So, you know, it's just, maybe it's kind of sappy and corny, but it's what I was feeling that day when I wrote it. <laughs> yeah. You right. know, you know, oh, that's if you, if you go back, you know, a thousand years to today, right. you're going to see a constant uptick in the standard of living, you know? Right. It's, it's still getting better regardless of what you see, you know, right. in my opinion. I agree. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, and and you know, it, you're absolutely right. I mean, I'm trying to like I'm trying to capture all that because there's a lot to unpack in that. But you're 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 absolutely right because um, the the world compared to X number of years ago, like even you know our parents' generation, our parents' parents' generation, there's no doubt that we are more privileged than we've ever been. You know, we, we certainly don't have the same kind of struggles going through the, the depression and those you know those world wars and all that and you know, and the, and the market crashes and all that, although we certainly have our share, but it's, it's so magnified now that when, you know, with, the, especially with the advent of the internet is that, you know, like, Oh yeah. It's like local stories become national news. And, you know, you just have to really kind of take a deep breath and go like, you know, you could read the internet for a day and just think like the world it's over. You know, and then you look, yeah. you know, and you shut it off. You look at like, oh, it's not so bad. I see a deer running across my yard. <laughs> right, cool. right. Yeah. Shit, it's, it's actually sunny out. What, what's going on? I think so, the internet's really polarized people. You know, like I'm kind of new oh, to living oh. in the USA. I've been here for about a year and a half, just over. Where are you from? Canada. Oh, no way. My wife's half Canadian. Where about? Uh, I'm from Vancouver. Okay, yeah, she's uh, from the Ontario, uh, from uh, up in Guelph, up in uh, oh yeah, yeah. Ontario, yeah, yeah. But so, like, when I moved down here, I just couldn't believe how polarized everyone was, oh, man. and um, and ideas that were deemed like really radical are pretty much normal all over the world. So, oh, no. but um, you know, I had to learn to adapt to the culture. But then, you know, when I go back to Canada, I just didn't see how polarized Canada was because I was yeah. just there, and I just. You know, it was just everyday life. I didn't think about it. But when I went back in July, I was like, Jesus, man, these people are just as polarized, except they're they're fighting over things, you know, a lot of times. Why can't people just be fucking cool to each other? <laughs> you know? I 100% agree. I know. You know what I mean? I like, <laughs> You're absolutely right. It's like, you know, as I was talking with a buddy of mine the other day about this, and it's like, it's like now where everyone's on a, on a team, right? It's like, you know, I'm a, I'm a Chicagoan, so I'm a Cubs guy, right? And no matter how bad the Cubs are, you know, I'm a Cubs fan, you know? Yeah, yeah. They could suck. They can make the worst decision and they, they have for centuries, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right? I sense no it bitterness here. <laughs> I cried when we won the World Series. I did. I teared and all that. But, I mean, it's like all, all those years just growing up with the Cubs fans, like, but I'm still a Cubs fan. You know, and some people are just a Yankees fan. I don't get, you know, they, they scream at them. They throw shit at the television. It, God damn it, I'm a Yankees fan and all that. And it's like today, I, you know, it doesn't matter how bad decisions are made or how bad things are, like with politicians and all that. I'm still a Republican and God damn it, that's my team. And I'm still, that's my freaking team. I'm a Democrat. I don't give a shit. It's my team. So we're like on two teams. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. matter what happens. It's like, I want my team to win. <laughs> it's all <laughs> right. winning. It's but that, that that really just pushes people so far apart, you know. Oh my God, I know, I know. But well, I I, res I respect the Chicago White Sox fans, so you know. So. 
I just don't so, like the team. But their fans are I fine. I just don't like the team. That's right. That's right. I'll go to the game. I will go to the game, but I want to eat their food. Yeah. yeah. But you can still sit down and have a beer with a, you know, a Yankee. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. it's, you can put aside your differences and still have a beer. I don't understand why everybody else can't do that. I know. If, it's if crazy. baseball was like politics right now, you and Bruce couldn't talk because he's a Yankees fan. Not right. Oh, I'm actually a Mets fan, but that's oh, beside. Sorry. See, now I really pissed him off. <laughs> yeah, and, so and we got through this. We got through the same dismal years as uh, you know. I, 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 I personally so. think life should be more like hockey. <laughs> I oh, do. You're Canadian, that makes sense. So you get on the ice, you beat the fucking shit out of each other, and when the game's yeah. over, you shake hands. You know, good yeah, game, good game, and then you go drink beers with them afterwards. Yeah, that's exactly that works. right. That's exactly right. <laughs> you're yeah. like, dude, that was one hell of a punch you threw in my eye. I know, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's right. And then you might be playing on the same team one day. You know, yeah, you exactly. No, that's right. You're spot on. So I know we came here to talk about the simple radicals and we're, we're always down a rabbit hole. I apologize, but that's all right. So now that, uh, you know, your records out, are you guys planning on taking this on the road or is it too early or how's it going to, what's the plan? Yeah. So the, the album launched, uh, I guess in June, uh, launch in June. And we, uh, we hit the road and started playing some fests and, uh, and some gigs in the Midwest. And then we, it was great. We got in, um, the thing started getting some traction and it started getting, uh, we came out with our first track was a track called Medicate. And we collaborated with Vernon Reed from Living Color. Who oh, plays wow. Pretty sweet. He, so if you listen to that track, that is Vernon Reed shredding the shit out of the, uh, of that song. It's, you can tell it's Vernon Reed when he plays it. And so we got invited. So that just all of a sudden kind of put us on this different level. Like, oh, you know, we started getting a lot of attention paid to us. And we got invited to play a fest with Stone Temple Pilots and Blue Oyster Cult, and we couldn't fit it into our calendar. We were so freaking pissed oh, off. Oh man! Oh, I know. Oh my god! And so, um, but you know, hopefully uh, next year we'll play some of those fests with some of those some of those bands. But um, we just played a private gig uh, this past weekend up in Long Island, up in New York, and then um, we're going to close out the year in December with a with a phenomenal gig at the Cutting Room on December fourteenth in New York City. Oh, nice! Yeah, which is our first gig out uh, on the you know in, in the true in true New York City. So, and then we're actually starting to plan out our our twenty twenty schedule right now. So, um, yeah, the plan is to you know the plan is to play out as much as we can and but be a lot smarter about it because what we what we don't want to do is we don't. I mean, we want to support this. We want to support this album, and we want to really play where we can, um, you know, we can really ha have an impact and, you know, play in, in front of a fair amount of people. And, you know, and so we're thinking a little bit more strategically about it and we're doing a lot more, you know, a lot more engagement with our fans and building up our fan base through social media. And we just launched a podcast that is going to go national on Rock Rage Radio, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, called Bands We Want to Open For. Nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we should have you guys on our podcast. But, yeah, um, man. Absolutely. So we, uh, we did, yesterday we just interviewed Dax Nielsen, the drummer from Cheap Trick. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And we're going to have Vernon Reed on. And we interviewed a few weeks ago, Eric Sherman, who managed Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. And next week, um, we're interviewing Jokey, Jokey, Jackie, the joke man, Martling. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Howard Stern's sidekick. Yeah. Next yeah. Thursday. So that'll be out. Yeah, so we're, we're getting some cool guests. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. It's fun. Yeah, we're trying to we're trying to mix it up. We're trying to you know it's as you guys know it's it's so freaking hard to break into this you know to break into this and break through you know when you got thirty thousand songs coming out a day on Spotify. So really starting to really trying to think how do you really think out of the box you know and yes the music you, your music can't suck so you have to come out with an album that's good. And we think right. they have a good album. We like our we like the album, we like our song. We're starting to write our, some more material right now. But then we're really thinking about how to strategically and tackle you know tackle social media, and so you know how to engage our fans and grow our fan base. You know the podcast and things like just lots of different ways of just think out of the box and just trying you know try and break through. It's tough, but and, it, and you know nowadays there's you know, you know no big record companies, no big budgets, so it's definitely you know we're in the same boat trying to do it all yourself. Yeah. Are you guys musicians? Do you guys play it? 
I do. I, I'm a hack. Chris plays. Nice. I do. Nice. So you're in a band and all that? You go out and play out? Uh, I used to quite a bit. Um, oh, now, cool. now I just sit in my studio and write all the time. Uh, it's fun, right? I, that's why I do it. You know, um, I did the whole band thing for a really long time. Right. And then um, I went through the ups and downs of like, oh, we're almost there. There's a deal here. There's a deal there. Whatever. And then I quit. And I didn't do it for about, I don't know, eight years, nine years. And uh, this year, because I'm an audio engineer, I, that's what I do for a living. Cool. So I have this great sounding room. And I just said, fuck it. I'm going to upgrade all my guitars nice. and, start, and start writing again. So that's what I did. And it's... Nice. I just finished my first song, and uh, I'm happy about it. <laughs> Good <laughs> whether, for you, man. Whether it's, it sees the light of day or not, I don't know. It's just fun to write. Um, I love it. It is fun. Yeah. I just, uh, you know, and this was like, um, so my fellow radical, uh, John, John Griffin, um, we played in many bands, you know, over the years, and then we connected about a, a year ago. Um, and uh, I, you know, I, I wrote all these tracks, and I had just so much fun writing uh you know some because i've written a lot of really bad shit over the years and then <laughs> i mean i'll be real candid it's just you know it's just like okay that sucks you know and then and for some reason i don't know i started working on this project and and uh and you can probably relate this when you were at Chris, but um i just started i started writing in like like pictures it's really weird i started they, they, I, I would start you know riffing on the guitar and coming up with some just different kind of licks and chord progressions and all that. And, you know, working on it. And then like pictures started coming into my head, like about these, you know, like these sounds started generating certain ideas about what the song potentially means and all that. And it started kind of creating this concept. And then the hard part is trying to take that picture and put it on paper. Like, okay, now I got to put words to it. And, but it just, this whole kind of concept and this whole new revolution concept just really kind of morphed really quickly for me. I don't know what happened. I hope I can, you know, regenerate that again, but, um, it's really rewarding though. Right. I mean, just, you know, when you get it all done and then finally you get it on, you know, on, on, you lay down the tracks and put some vocals behind it. It's like, that's not bad. Oh yeah. I think, I think <laughs> the best thing for me is not what other people think of the music, but do I enjoy listening to it when it's done? Exactly. You know, and that, that feeling like when you first get your mix done and put it in your car and you crank it up and you're rocking out, I fucking That's love. Right. I love that feeling, man. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, we had we had a validation. We played this. Uh, we played a couple gigs in Michigan and Battle Creek at the, uh, at the at the Diesel where Kid Rock and all those guys have played, and uh, and then and then uh, a, a place in Detroit. And this band that went on right before us was this was really heavy metal. I mean, they were really good. I can't remember their name. I think they were a local Detroit band. I mean, just tight as shit. <laughs> and just, you know, loud freaking, you know, I mean, just cranking those, you know, the E, A, and B chord, you know, string, yeah. just dirty, you know, just E, N, A, D, just, you know, heavy, heavy metal, all that. And, that, you know, and John and I are looking at each other and we were their bass player and drummer. And I'm just like, oh, fuck, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> the crowd, the crowd was just like, they were into it. I'm like, you know, we're not metal, you know, but like, here we are. It's all that. And he's like, you know, let's just play our song. And so we get up there, you know, and we thought, you know, they probably thought we were a metal band, you know, and it's like, and then we started playing, we kicked off our first track and all that and played, you know, played the whole album. And then it was really wild to watch, you know, and we were standing up on stage and then people just started kind of coming out, you know, milling out and then they're all coming, you know, standing and looking at us and kind of rocking all that. But then the lead singer of the band that opened, you know, that played just before us came out and was standing in the middle of the room with his arms crossed, just staring at us kind of nodding his head, you know, and I'm looking at him, you know, and I'm just like, okay, that's cool. He likes it, all that. And then we stopped and people are like, wow, you know, we really like your music, all that. The next day I get a, I get a, a Facebook messenger from this guy. He's like, dudes, you guys totally brought it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We, we made it. <laughs> In, Van nice. in, Van in Vancouver, we used to call that the heavy metal sandwich. So, like, no you shit. yeah. So, right. you, you a heavy metal band opens, then a rock band gets put in the middle, and a heavy metal band closes. That's exactly what happened. Oh, no, that's like, a thing, huh? Know. It's a heavy metal sandwich. I love nice. that. I'm going to use that. Yeah, we got a heavy metal <laughs> sandwich. Nice. Man. I thought we were going to get we were going to get you know Spinal Tapped out, but we uh, they actually dug the music. So, and the crowd yeah. was okay. 
Yeah, they loved it. Yeah, they were, they were totally into it. You know, because we also do we do some ballads. You know, we have this a song called "Learn" and a song called "Talk," and really kind of like "Learn" is is very kind of this this Pink Floyd, Pink Floydian kind of comfortably numb, kind of the same E minor G D A progression. Um, you know that you know kind of the it's the, uh, the 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 alive you know kind of chord progression the program. Right. And, um, but it's, uh, it's a very, it's a song that I wrote about, you know, if I read, go back and read a story to my kids when they were young and like what life's all about and, you know, how you have to teach them about, you know, you want to teach them about love and, you know, and all the great things in life, but you also have to teach them about, they need to understand the opposite. They, they need to understand hate and they need to understand the opposite of everything that's good because there's that shit going on in our world and they just need to digest it and know what it means because they're going to face it. And so it's about, you know, learning what life is and all that. And it's, it's a real, it's a ballad. And John just gives this blistering, you know, David Gilmore-ish kind of works his way from the top to, you know, bottom to the top of the fretboard. And, um, and it's a ballad, you know, and, um, but people were like, they were totally into it. And that's just, to me, that kind of validation, like if you can just, you know, if you can get in front of a crowd, you know, rock it hard, you know, turn to 11 and then turn it down to four. And, you know, sing a ballad that, you know, that's just, you hope they get, and they're just kind of looking at you and they're, they're just kind of rocking. You're like, you know, just nodding their heads. You're like, that's right. That's pretty freaking good. You know? Oh yeah, absolutely. Great feeling. Yeah. Love that. Sweet. Chris, you got anything else before I, uh, go ahead, man. <laughs> All right. So John, we, uh, we always ask or close this out by, uh, asking some ridiculous questions. Oh, right. kind of gives fans to get a chance to get to know you. But since you have the tennis ball and Chris mentioned it already, um, yeah. if you're game, why do you think tennis balls are fuzzy? Why are tennis balls fuzzy? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> I think... Oh shit, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so, so many people have asked me a question over the years and I've never come up with a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> why are tennis balls fuzzy? Um, I think probably because the guy who invented it was pretty proud of his, uh, his, uh, his package that, uh, that, you know, he's like, if I'm coming up with balls, man, I'm going to put some hair on them and fuck anyone who thinks differently. Nice. <laughs> nice. That you know, works for me. Worse, nothing worse than a flat ball, you know? I 100% agree. Unless you're into that whole manscaping thing. That's what Indeed. she said. Indeed. <laughs> Chris saying, is always nothing, trying to get that. that. She that. said it there. So. No, nothing wrong with that. There's two things that will always be awesome. Bacon and the saying, that's what she said. <laughs> nice. You're nailing that. All right, John, so, so you're fun. stranded on a... Sorry, to, stranded any, on a- sorry to any vegetarians out there. No. Jesus. <laughs> we need it. We need it. All the vegans. So you're yeah. stranded on a deserted island, John, and you have a... Say you have a remote CD player, turntable, whatever you got. What three records are you going to take for the rest of your life or eternity or whatever it ends up being? Oh, Pink, Pink Floyd, Dark Star of the Moon, Cheap Tricks in Color and Black and White, and Collective Soul, Dosage. Interesting. Nice. Yeah. Very different. Albums. Yeah, that's I mean, a very you know, interesting. Uh, was, dosage, I, I was Dosage their second album? I think it was, yeah. It's one of my all-time favorite albums. I mean, I, I probably should. I mean, if you gave me a fourth album, I should. I should probably throw, I, you know, I got, probably got throwing Zeppelin one or Zeppelin four in there, but, um, but I just, uh, I just burned the shit out of those albums. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Dosage is their fourth record. It's their fourth record. Yeah, you're right. That is one of their later albums. God, Released in 99. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, Great that's all I've got, Chris. You got anything else? I don't. This is John Malcolm with the Simple Radicals, and this is the title track off our album New Revolution. It's called New Revolution. I hope you like it.
start a new revolution Cause the leaders can find the solutions And we got nothing left to hide Gonna use the power of persuasion Gonna take it all across the nation Don't need no bombs or bullets by our side Thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it. Totally, guys. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. I love it. Good All luck right. with the record. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, brother. Sounds good, man. Talk Bye. soon. Be well. Peace. Right up. Bye-bye. Right, Bye. 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 Well, cool. Thanks for listening. I appreciate you taking the time. Go ahead and check out Simple Radicals. And uh, Christian, anything else? I don't, man. I hope everyone has a fantastic fucking day. Right on. And keep it metal. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. Right. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to go crack one right now. I'm I off tonight. I can't. I gotta wait for the wife to get home. It's a rule. Oh, you guys have a rule. Well, is it's, it really? It's my rule. <laughs> oh, okay. we had the in-laws. So in- Denise, we, doesn't, we, we Denise the- doesn't drink at all. Oh, really? Not at all. I wish I had that problem. <laughs> and no, uh, no, like no religious reason or no any reason. Just she just doesn't like it. Every once every once in a while, she'll have a, like a you know a fruity fruit fruit drink. But most of the time, she's not drinking anything at all. So it's great because I've always got a built-in driver. That's awesome. I don't <laughs> I don't have that. Um, <laughs> no, this weekend we had the in-laws down, and we like 
put up all new lights in the house and fixed up all our railings and painted them and stuff. We started mm-hmm. drinking at like one in the afternoon every day. So then her in law, her parents left on uh, yesterday. So mm-hmm. then I'm, I'm going through detox, you know. So I got to wait till six. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. I'm off tonight. It's one of those rare nights to have no school and no work. So I've got, uh, I've got some IPA sitting in the fridge waiting for uh, just beckoning me. Enjoy the enjoy a cold brew, my friend. Right on. Thanks again, everybody. Have a good week. Cheers. And, uh,